Vivian? And so it begins. What begins? The ninth gen build. Yay. <laughs> As promised, here's the flash pro. And here's a nice note from Tyler. He's actually a real person and ended up working out. I didn't get scammed. Thanks, Cameron. Good luck with the build. Class act. All right. Thank you, Tyler. Trout. <laughs> so in this video, I'll be installing Hot Edit Flash Pro on my ninth gen and start the e-tuning process with my tuner, Yosh Tune. You guys may have heard of him. Uh, I'll link his Instagram right here. He has videos of him with his K24 swapped RSX destroying people. He pulverized a fearable tune, 10th gen SI. Awesome. Somebody linked his information in a recent YouTube video of mine and when I first got the ninth gen and uh, I immediately looked him up. I saw that he knows his stuff and uh, he's gonna tune me. So let's get started. Awesome, that's perfect. Um, let me send you the uh, base calibration right now. Um, it'll have instructions as to what to do for the pools um, and also uh, what to do for like city driving and, and highway driving. On my base calibrations, the rev limiter is set to 6K and there is no VTEC as um, I need to gather as much data as possible and also so I can determine where exactly your VTEC point needs to be at. Uh, for the most part on the on these uh, K24Z7s, because uh, they make so much, you know, good low end torque uh, compared to a K20, their VTEC point is set I. Um, between 4,800 and 5,000 at the most, for the most part. Um, and especially being stock, it'll probably stay stay around there as well. But the thing is, it'll be really, really smooth along with the AFRs and the timing. Uh, that's what plays a big, big factor in regards to making power is um, the AFRs, um, and, but most importantly, the ignition timing and cam angles. I'm gonna download the tune that uh, Josh sent me and then upload it to the car. Open the tune. It's very similar to K-Tuner. If I remember correctly, I should have a bunch of lights on. If I don't. So I'm really wondering if it actually uploaded or not. Okay, so the first data log, he needs a 10 minute log of city driving and highway driving. He says, try to play with the engine load on the SI so and get as much data as possible. So stop and go. The more, the better to start off. So let's do that. One thing I noticed between the 10th and the 9th is that the ninth has way softer suspension, which I don't think that's going to be a surprise to anybody. So, since he said to uh, play with the engine load, I'm going to drop down to fourth, go to fifth, just kind of play around with it, go to sixth, give him a lot of data to work with. Tomorrow morning I'll be putting on the exhaust. That shouldn't take long. I'm going to do it right here in the in the driveway. So that after this video. That is the next video that you should see. I think this car needs new motor mounts. If you're watching this and you have a ninth gen, you live nearby, like near the Rockland, Roseville area, uh, would you mind letting me drive your car to see the difference in like how mine feels compared to yours? Because I think, I really do think mine needs some motor mounts or a transmission mount or something like that. It, it's a little rough when it shifts, but the I know the clutch is good and there's no grinding, as far as I can tell. Anyway, I, I would just like to drive someone else's ninth gen to get a to get some perspective. This thing is so quiet, I have to look at the tachometer when I'm downshifting. With the 10th gen, I do not have to look at the tachometer anymore because I can hear it. You know, I have the cold air intake and I have the full exhaust, so I can just blip the throttle and downshift also the i mean they're just totally different cars so i'm i'm used to driving the 10th gen obviously uh i took this to work for the first time yesterday i did okay got me there in one piece i love 
how much visibility there is in this car. Even though this car is kind of a dump right now, I love it. Yeah, I gotta work on that downshift. So far, I wanna say I feel a difference in the way the car drives like this, especially the mid-range with this base calibration that Josh sent me, but it may also be a placebo effect, I don't know. It does, I don't know, it just feels good, like the mid-range right now. All right, see this thing here? Set that end the data log? Stop, press data log. Okay, now it's logging. I wanna make sure that that's saved. Fuck, I don't think I recorded all of that, babe. You got the five second one that we did in here. So I think maybe in order to start it, you gotta make sure that's like blinking, doing what it was doing earlier. I don't think that recorded. If it did, I don't know where the hell it went. So uh, what we're gonna do is uh, record it from the flash by this time because the five second one that I did in here just to test it, it did pop up right there. So let's do it again. on the calibration he sent me because <laughs> did you feel that where yep. <laughs> okay what that was so he one he turned VTEC off so this does not have VTEC and two uh, he set the rev limiter to 6,000 rpm so I went and it it like pulled us back <laughs> that was weird but that's how we know that uh, we're on we're, we're on the right track I guess I almost felt like it stuttered <laughs> well it cuts the power So now you can see here we get, that's the one that we just did. Data log 0001. Now, let's read the instructions for the second one. Second part of this, find a flat, even surface to do a third gear pull. This place will be where we do all of our dyno pulls from now on so I can provide an e-dyno that's as accurate as possible. So the pull, start in third gear at 2000 RPM and smash the pedal all the way to the floor. It says smash, all caps. It'll bounce off the rev limiter, which is 6,000 RPM, and the log there, that's all we will need for this one. I don't even think we need the laptop to be plugged in. All right, I'm not gonna go on the highway, I'm actually gonna do my pull right here. Looks like we're good. So at 2,000 RPM, I'm gonna smash the throttle. So I noticed several things in this video and I'm really sorry for that. So we were filming with Vivian's phone. Vivian has the just the iPhone 11. And for some reason, I feel like this, her video comes out worse than mine on my iPhone 10R. And I have an iPhone 12 on the way, the iPhone 12 Pro. Not the Pro Max, just the iPhone 12 Pro. I don't want the big, big one. But the iPhone 12 Pro is still gonna have a really, really good camera upgrade from this phone right here that I've been using for the past year and some change on the, on my YouTube channel. So anyway, I apologize for the quality of this video. And also I should have had the light on inside the car the entire time. And also I should have not had the laptop up because that laptop, like it hurts my eyes to look at that on video. So part two will be a lot better, I promise. So if you live near the Sacramento area, Rockland, Roseville, Marysville, Elk Grove, whatever, and you think you have a car that would be a good match for my ninth gen on a tune only right now. Mind you, it's only gonna be on a tune only for two, three weeks because the intake is coming in first week of November. And then that's gonna add an actual, like that's actually gonna add a good amount of power for this ninth gen. And then the downpipe's coming right after that. RBC manifold right after that. So if you have a car um, that you think would be a good match, please DM me on Instagram and we'll, We'll figure that out. But uh, other than that, I have been filming every single day since I got back from Maine. And there's a, there, I, I have so many videos just waiting to be edited. I think I have five. So part two of the e-tune process is gonna feature the first revision, 
second revision, and some short interviews with him to learn some more information on the e-tuning, like the tuning process in general of these uh, the K-Series engines. I'm super excited about this. Also, with, with with just the tune, I would like to get this on an actual dyno, like maybe sometime next week, to see um, what Josh was able to accomplish just with, well, I mean, it has a three inch catback exhaust now, but it's basically stock. You're not gonna gain much from a catback. I think the 2014 SI was when they did the mid cycle refresh, and it went from 201 to 205 horsepower and Honda claims that that was from a revised exhaust system. So, hey, maybe I'll gain four, four horsepower. <laughs> Whatever, that's fine. But I think even just with the tune, I mean, not even considering the catback exhaust, I, I would like to think he could get 10, 12 horsepower out of that. But we'll see, we'll see. It already feels a lot better. And I can't wait to try it out in some real world applications, if you know what I'm talking about. All right, thanks for watching. I will see you next on Monday. Have a good weekend.